Okay, alrighty then, okay. How do we put okay and alrighty then together? Okay, alrighty then, how about that? So question number eight. How sensitive is net present value, is the net present value of the project to the cost of capital? So uh, we're gonna create a table and a graph, a line graph, uh, to show us the profile of the sensitivity of net present value to changes in um, the cost of capital. So, create a new tab here, hit that plus sign, create a new tab, call it NVP, NPV uh, Sensitivity, title it, we got WAC here and net present value here, and we know that uh, this number here is the internal rate of return, 25.5%. So at 25.5%, what is the net present value of the project? And the answer is, let me hear it. And the answer is zero. All right? The answer is zero. Let's go ahead and center this. Now, so our job is to change the cost of capital, which is right up here, 14%. What happens when we change the cost of capital? So if our cost of capital goes down, what do you think will happen to the net present value? It will go up. All right, let's take a look. Let's take this to... Um, Let's take it to 10%. Uh, let's leave it at 14% here. Okay, let's take it. So at 14%, we know that the net present value is that. Okay, let's open that up a little bit, and I think we can make this currency and take that out, the two zeros, there we go. Let's make sure it's capturing that number correctly, and it is. Alright, now, so simple to do, we're going to change this to 10%. Boom. And let's scroll out here. Let's drag that out here. And our net present value goes from 11,300,000 to 17 million. Okay? So, whoops, you know, um, 11 to 77. So let's make this. 11 million to 77. All right, we've got to hard copy that in. Now at 10%, oops. Now, sorry. 11,100,000. That's right. 11,100,000. Okay. And at 10%, we'll go back here. Now we'll change this to 10. And we'll scroll. We'll drag that out here. And it becomes 17. Uh, 049. Go here, 17 million 049. Let's go ahead and put that there and go ahead and put this here. Alright, let's go back in here and 
change this to 20%. So I changed 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2. 1 and then drag that out here. And we get um, 4.44 million. Four million four hundred forty thousand. Okay. Now let's change it to thirty percent, and it's going to be negative. And let's scroll that because it's above our twenty-five percent, twenty-five and a half percent, and it's minus two point eight two million. So, minus 2,820,000. There we go. All right. So, we have found what our net present value looks like under these scenarios. By the way, just for grins, let's make this 0.2. Take it out there, and it's as close to zero as you can get. Okay. Two, five, five, two. Let's see what happens. Ah, uh, no, it's going to be too high. One. And let's see what happens here. Ah, didn't do it. 0 0.255 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 trying to get this to zero. Ah! We can't do it. We're close. Alright, so we have our profile here. So let's go ahead and highlight that. Then go to data. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Insert. And let's do a line chart. We'll do a chart that way. And what we need to do is well, actually, flip it. Let's see what I want. Mm. I think we need to flip this. Insert. Chart. Select data, and then let's switch that. Let's see what that looks like. No, mm, that's not what I want to do. Hold on, bear with me. Select data. Switch that back. All right, so this is zero.
show. I guess this may be a problem. Point three. This needs to be why are we switching. Bear with me. Let's look at it. So I really want let's see, if we, let's see if we can switch this. Get the magic. Yeah, that's what, no, it's not what I want. That's what I want, but why? Yeah? I want this. To say 20%. This is zero. I should say 0.255. I wonder why it doesn't. Hmm. Right, the only thing that's changed here. Go ahead and let's add data levels here. There we go. Let's move this out. Okay. Just a format. Bear with me. We're just working our way through this.
this. If this should be dollars. That's the issue here. Since it looks like this, the value 2.8 million at 30 percent. Well, I don't want to wrestle with this too much. What I want you to see is the slope of the graph that um, as the um, I'll work I'll work on this on my own, but as the cost of capital goes up, the value of the project goes down, and the crossover here is at 25.5 percent, which you really can't see very well. Let's move this down. There you go. So um, this number here, 25.5 percent is, is where you break even. And you can see the slope of the line, and um, you can see um, the steeper the slope, the uh, more sensitive the um, net present value is to changes in rates. And we could do this 1% at a time over here and um, get and would have to and would get 10 or 15 uh, in net present values over here and would, it would be a lot more accurate. I chose to take these big intervals of four percentage points and six percentage points um, so that we could quickly build a profile but we could make it one percent differences and cut and uh, make this a lot more detailed. But this shows us um, uh, so from uh, 25 and a half percent to 20 percent there's um, it's not that as sensitive but then there's a big six percent you add that extra six uh, half a percent jump from 20 percent to 14 percent instead of five and a half percent it's six percent and it goes up very quickly uh, by seven million dollars and then it goes up again this is just a four percent jump and it goes up by six million dollars okay so the slope of this line shows you how sensitive uh, the net present value is to changes in the weighted average cost of capital. Alright, um, operating leverage has to do with the change in um, sales and the change in um, EBIT or EBITDA, actually um, EBIT. And so um, what we would do to find the operating leverage is find the percentage change in sales and we would do that under a base case. Find the percentage change in sales, okay, which would be 34 million divided by 30 million. So let's go ahead and create that. Let's, let's call this operating leverage. And let's call this the percentage change in, uh, let's just say EBIT. And we'll call this the um, percentage change in sales. And then we'll have our operating leverage. Alright, so that is equal to, and let's go ahead, insert, and we'll call this year. So, one, two, Alright, now, year one, we have the percentage change in EBIT. Well, we can only do it for year two, sorry. Starting in year two. Alright, so this equals 
uh, this divided by this minus 1. And let's go ahead and make, make this a percentage and take off, let's add a couple of um, numbers there. So we have a 2.66% change. Let's make sure that looks right. So EBIT, yeah, not much change there. Okay, and let's go back here and let's find the percentage change in sales equals that divided by that minus one and go ahead and format this and operating leverage is equal to this divided by that minus one and we do not have operating leverage here okay all right, now, do we want to do it this way or do we want to change the, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to have to flip this, yeah, let's flip it. Um, and the reason I want to do that is we're going to be calculating this number across. So we're going to want to calculate this number across. So, um, so let's change this. Clear contents. And let's say this is the year. One. And two. And let's go ahead and line those up. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now let's compute the percentage change in EBIT. And it's going to be, whoops, we can't really realize, let's call this two, three, and take it out there. All right, and percentage change in EBIT is equal to that divided by that minus one. And so now we can scroll that out here like so. Yikes, and then uh, percentage change